God be the glory. We stand to celebrate the life of Reverend Julia Smith, a woman who truly loved God and walked according to his word. We at Bethel Downingtown and the whole entire Downingtown community are going to miss Reverend Julia Smith. She was a woman that didn't operate just in pretense, but in practice. She ran a Jehovah Jireh ministry in the community of Downingtown, and because of her, many families were fed and many bodies were clothed. And we just thank Reverend Julia for all that she's done, and we know that her living shall not be in vain. We praise God and we thank her uh, for the legacy that she has left in Downingtown, and we truly believe that our loss is heaven's gain. The Reverend Donald Bureau, itinerant elder, presiding elder Janet Sturdivant will speak on behalf of Pastor Bureau. There's no one in this room who did not know Reverend Donald Burns. He was a husband for 40 years. He had four children and 10 grandchildren and one great grandchild. He was a pastor for 17 years. He moved St. John from one location to right across the street. He is well beloved by his church and so well beloved by us. We miss him. His favorite song was My Soul is anchored in the Lord. He was an exceptional person. I said every day he had his uniform on. He had a hat, a suit, and a smile. He prayed. He was a praying, praying man. He loved his congregation, but he loved everybody else as well. He would call you, just call you and say, Elder, how you doing today? Call a preacher, how you doing today? Call a member, how you doing today? He would be sitting in one of these seats and then he would always have a smile. No one knew that he was going through dialysis. No one knew that he had had brain surgery. No one knew that he was as sick as he was because he never let you know because he always lifted up the blood-stained banner of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There was only one Donald Burham Sr., and we certainly miss him and still love him much. The Reverend Pleasant Hill, superannuate, the Reverend Terrence Hensley will speak on behalf of Reverend Haley. Today we also remember and thank God for the Reverend Pleasant Haley. He was a devoted father, true friend, loving brother, trusted colleague, good and faithful servant, pastor and preacher of the word of God. It was always so good to be in his company. He is now absent in the body, but very present with the Lord. Peace be unto his ashes and rest upon his soul. The Reverend Jerome Thomas, superannuate, presiding elder Lawrence Henryham will speak on behalf of Reverend Thomas. God be the glory. 
for all the good things he has done and is doing. We are thankful to him, as Reverend Thomas would say, for all of this electronic equipment that we are dealing with in hand. But Reverend Thomas was an individual. He was a quiet man that walked softly with knowledge of things that if you inquired of him, he was willing to share. For more than 14 years, Reverend Thomas loved the Lord and his pastoral charge. He made sure T's were crossed and I's were dotted. He was community-minded, knowing who he needed to see and when he needed to see them concerning his congregation. Reverend was a faithful believer in the 27th Psalm, where he said, the Lord is the light, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? He would, he would say sometime, Elder, the Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? And I just believe that Reverend Thomas knew how to wait for the Lord. For, what, for whatever we talked about sometime, he would, kind of, he would say, be strong and take heart and wait on the Lord. Jerome was an indiv individual that if you knew him, you had to love him. If you knew him, wherever you were, he and you needed him, he would be there. He didn't come into your face or into your space and give advice. But if you asked him, he was willing to share the knowledge that he had. If you did not ask him, he would go on about his business. He was a friendly individual that loved people also. He loved his family. He provided for his family. He provided for the community. For whoever needed assistance and he was able to give, he was there. He was a neighbor, wasn't that far away. And anytime you ride by the house and happened to see him out, he would always wave. That was a smile. He's a friend, was a friend. He's a missed pastor. I would say, sleep on, my brother. Rest, I'll see you in the morning. And we certainly acknowledge the presence of Reverend Thomas's wife, Reverend Charlie Mae Thomas. Amen. God be with you. The Reverend Charles Wood, superannuate, presiding elder Charles Lett will speak on behalf of Reverend Wood. Good afternoon, Reverend uh, Johnson just asked me just a few minutes ago to speak on behalf of Reverend Woods, but that was no problem. Amen. Amen. Reverend Woods really uh, was looked at as the songbird yeah. of the Philadelphia Annual Conference. Yeah. He, he was one of those pastors that uh, if the bishop had to leave the room, uh, he would say, Reverend Woods, come down and sing a song. And by the time the bishop got back, everybody was shouting and, and praising the Lord. He was seeing us happy. Uh, he did pastor two churches. I, I was not his presiding elder at the time, but he did pastor two churches on the West Mainland District, St. Paul Malvern and Bethel Downingtown. He was a beloved person. I don't know anybody that didn't like Reverend Woods. And even after retirement, people were still calling Reverend Woods to come sing and preach. And so he's singing in heaven now, and I know there's a powerful choir uh, backing him up. So we're gonna miss him, and we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Amen. Bishop, I just ask that you give me one uh, indulgence We had a member of the Institute, 
brother Kelvin Guyton, who was in the class on second year studies, and he would have been before you to be ordained. But he went on to be with the Lord uh, not that long ago. And so we didn't want this moment to pass without lifting up his name. And we know his wife, Sister Angel, who's also in the Institute, it has been a struggle for her. Uh, so we just ask your prayers for Sister Angel and Kelvin Jr. and uh, the rest of the family. But we didn't want this conference to, to close without the records recorded uh, that Brother Kelvin Guyton, he walked among us. So to God be the glory for him. Connectional Officer Judge Patricia Marie Mayberry, Dr. Vernon Bird will speak on her behalf. Many of you uh, in the room may not know the name Patricia Mayberry, but she was the president of the Judicial Council of the AME Church. And um, though you didn't know her, her heart was with you because she loved the church and she loved the Lord. She served on the Judicial Council over 30 years she was president for approximately 22 years. She stood 5'3", five, 5'4", five, mm -hmm. but pound for pound, she was yeah. one of the best leaders in the church, one of the best leaders I've ever seen in action. Um, amen. She had a tough job, a thankless job, she had to lead eight other uh, very opinionated judges. <laughs> I was one of them. We all knew we were right, um, but she had to lead us and make us a cohesive force, a cohesive unit. She never ducked the tough issues. Um, and she was always, she, she brought such integrity to the court so that when people uh, thought about whether they should bring cases, it wasn't uh, a matter if they really knew the church. It wasn't a matter of whether to bring a case because the judges were corrupt. Uh, Judge Mayberry led a court of integrity. She was a friend. She was a mentor. Um, she encouraged me. And um, sometimes she made me feel like she was the only I was the only one she was encouraging, but she was encouraging uh, a lot of people. Uh, what a great leader, what a great friend, and uh, we were all shocked at her passing, uh, but we know that we'll see her in glory again. Uh, amen. General Officer, Dr. Jamie Coleman Williams, Bishop Julius McHarris McAllister will speak on her behalf. Dr. Jamie Coleman Williams, retired general officer. Dr. Jamie Coleman Williams has often been referred to as an activist for social reform, justice, a scholar, and a leader within the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Often, quite often, she proudly boasts about the large number of bishops who were her students at Wilberforce University. She is credited for spearheading the election of a number of bishops, male and female. She served as professor of four AME schools, Edward Waters, Shorter, Morris Brown, and Wilberforce. Dr. Jamie became a general officer in the AME Church in 1984 when she was elected the editor of the AME Church Review. She served in that office for eight years. She's been, it has been said that 
Only a few women, if any, have had the impact upon the life of the Amy Church, as did she. She went on to be with the Lord on January 19th, 2022. Servant of God, well done. Episcopal Supervisors, Supervisor Stan McKenzie and Supervisor Lucinda Crawford Beelan. Mother McAllison will speak on their behalf. Brother Stan McKenzie, retired Episcopal Supervisor. Brother Stan McKenzie became the first male to serve as an Episcopal Supervisor. That honor came at the General Conference in 2000. After his wife, Bishop Van Tys um, McKenzie, was elected and consecrated the first female bishop in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, Brother Stan was known and respected for his love, dedication, and commitment to the Women's Missionary Society. He served proudly with his wife in the 18th, the 13th, and the 10th Episcopal Districts. He departed this life on July the 21st, 2021. Rest in peace, my brother. Mrs. Lucinda Crawford Beelan, retired Episcopal Supervisor. Today, we remember fondly retired Episcopal Supervisor, Mrs. Lucinda Crawford Beelan, who served alongside her husband, the Right Reverend Henry Allen Beelan Jr. in the 15th, the 16th, the 12th, the 3rd, and the 7th Episcopal Districts. She will long be remembered for her love for God, her family, and church. She entered eternal life on September the 24th, 2021. She is the mother of Reverend Dr. Henry Allen Beelan III, Reverend Dr. Tony Beelan Ingram, and Reverend Dr. Roderick Beelan. Rest, my sister. Peace be with you. Bishop, the Right Reverend William Philip DeVoe, Bishop Alistair will speak on behalf of Bishop DeVoe. The Right Reverend William Philip DeVoe Sr., retired Bishop in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Bishop William Philip DeVoe served as pastor of four congregations during his many years of pastoral ministry. He last passed, his last pastor appointment was the Metropolitan AME Church in Washington, D.C. In 1996, the Reverend Dr. William Philip DeVoe was elected and consecrated the 113th elected and consecrated bishop of, of our church. As an active bishop, he served the following Episcopal districts, the 18th district, the 16th, uh, the 6th, and the, seventh, uh, the 2nd Episcopal district. Bishop DeVoe had a reputation of being a man of integrity, a man of uh, transparency, a man of accountability. He retired as an active bishop at the General Conference in 2016. He was predeceased by his loving and supportive wife for 59 years, Dr. Pamela 
Anne DeVoe. Bishop DeVoe transferred uh, from the church militant to the church triumphant. On December 31st, 2021. Servant of God, well done. Fought a good fight. You finished the race and you kept the faith. We love and will miss Bishop William Philip DeVoe Sr. Oh God, we thank and praise you for the love, life, and labor of our deceased colleagues and loved ones. We thank you for their faithful witness in the word and in deed. Allow us to be inspired and to emulate what was good in them, that we might see your face in the land of the perfect day. We pray in the name of him who took the sting out of death and victory from the grave, even Jesus Christ, our savior and resurrected, reigning and ruling Lord, amen. Beloved, many of these persons never received a standing ovation in life, but I believe they deserve a standing ovation from this 206th session of the Philadelphia Annual Conference. To God be the glory. The hymn of triumph of hope, sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Let us sing this triumph of hope.
unto him that is able to keep us from falling yes. and to present us with faultless before the presence of his holy and exceeding joy. To the only wise God, yes. our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, hallelujah, and majesty, dominion, and power, both now and evermore. Amen. We're ready now to begin the uh, midday uh, worship experience, Our Power. So the worship leader and those other persons who are participating, if you would come. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Welcome to the Hour of Power. We're here to praise and lift up the holy name of our God and to Jesus Christ, our Savior, as the Holy Spirit ministers to us. We will now have our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Please stand. This afternoon is 221, a familiar how to reach the masses. 
from those from every birth for an answer Jesus gave the key and he said if I be lifted up I will draw everyone unto me let us sing without further aligning Praise the name of Jesus. 
We will now have our prayer by the Reverend Michael Sturdivant, followed by a selection with the conference choir. Every eye closed, every head bowed, every mind stayed on Jesus. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, no, no. There's a cross for everyone. And I know there's a cross for me. Eternal God, once again, we, we pause at noonday so that we can have a meal with you. We pray, God, that you would just set the table and that you would bring the food out now as one of your servants has already tied on the apron and ready to serve the meal. Kumba here, my Lord, Kumba here. Somebody needs you, Lord, Kumba here. If you come by here, Lord, somebody will feel a little bit better. Lord, if you stop by, Somebody who is feeling down will be lifted up. And if you come by here, my Lord, somebody will have a smile on their face. We just want to feel your presence. Let your love, your love flow from heart to heart and from breast to breast. You've been good to us. You've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. You were here before we got here. We felt your love when we entered the building, God. And so now, God, we thank you for our Episcopal leaders like a breath of fresh air. I don't know how you knew, Lord, but you knew that we needed a, to feel a nice, cool breeze blowing through the first Episcopal district. Oh, we didn't know who you were going to send, but you got the right ones, God. And we're so happy we can walk around and lift our heads up because we don't feel like we in this all by ourselves. We, we feel like we got somebody who can roll their sleeves up and, and got the calm and touch. Don't mind walking a mile with us. Don't mind sitting down talking with us. But most of all, God, he has a heart for you, he and his queenly wife. So now, God, the food ought to be about ready now. And, 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 and we are looking to the hills from whence cometh our help. Bless the man that you have handpicked to serve the meal. Reverend Dr. Gregory Nelson, God. Touch his voice. Let him, let him give us a little appetizer before he sing, before he preach the word. Give him some gravy to put on the word, God. Want some juice and meat. Straight from heaven. Bless us and we shall be blessed. Keep us and we shall be kept. This is thy servant's prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Love you, Lord.
praise him enough. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. The scripture, the scripture reading will be by the Reverend Dr. Michelle Pinkby Macbeth, followed by the presentation of the bishop by the Reverend Lois M. Wilkinson, and the program will go on as follows. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Our scripture reading will be found in Psalm 34, starting at the first verse. And it reads like this. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. For my soul makes the boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all of my fears. The Lord, look to him, and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Praise the, Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that protocol has already been established. But I am grateful for this privilege to present our presiding prelate. While we may not have known him for a very long time, we have come to know him this week. Our bishop, I would say, could be compared to a pilot because a pilot must possess certain characteristics necessary traits and skills. You see, a pilot must possess clear communication. Our bishop, check. Situational awareness, our bishop, check. Team working skills, our bishop, check. Decisiveness and quick thinking, our bishop, check. Y'all got it now. The ability to reclaim, to remain calm. Our bishop, check. Confidence and self-discipline. Our bishop, check. Leadership skills. Our bishop, check. You see, a pilot also encounters many uh, things while flying a plane. Whether it's turbulence flying over storms or avoiding collisions. And I believe that since arriving here, our bishop, the pilot of the first district, has had to fly over many turbulence and through many thunderstorms. But can I tell you, this week he has shown us that the night. He has had lots of cat with the right characteristics. He has learned how to land safely. How do I know? Because he has flown over the storms. Because like the songwriter says, he says, I've seen the lightning flashing. He says, I have heard the thunder roll. He said, and I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. He said, but I heard what? The voice of Jesus telling me to fight and to conquer on. So my brothers and my sisters, I want to say like our pilot here, he's going to get up and the pilot says what when the plane has arrived? He says, thank you for riding with us today. Ain't that what they say? He said, the plane, what, has landed safely. He says, now you can unbuckle your seatbelts. So my brothers and my sisters, unbuckle your seatbelts and rise as I present uh, the right Reverend Julius Harris McAllister, the 129th elected and consecrated bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. He has landed at the 206th Philadelphia Annual Conference.
this. Yeah. This is a bad sister here. Yeah. 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 I like that. But you know something? I'm just so excited and glad that um, that Mother McAllister is, uh, that she's here. <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> Are you listening? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, li I like that. Um, I'm sure it's been recorded. Uh, uh, huh? <laughs> Thank you. I, 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 I want it. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Um, it's, it's preaching time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's preaching time. We, we need now hear another word from the Lord. We, the Lord has, has spoken to us through, through this choir <clears throat> Amen. and through these musicians. Amen. Uh, the Lord has spoken to, to us through the, through the prayer Amen. that was offered and Amen. through the scripture reading. Can I tell Mother McAllister that the Lord has spoken through the introduction of the preacher? <laughs> So we've heard the word, so it's time now for another, another word from, from, the, from the Lord. Our, our preacher, he got the call this morning. Mm -hmm. He got the call this, this morning. And uh, uh, at 4 o'clock this morning, I, when I was doing what I was doing, getting, uh, getting ready for this today's conference, I realized that I had not um, asked or designated someone to preach to at this noonday service. The Reverend Dr. Gregory Nelson, Amen. the pastor of uh, Hickman Temple, African Methodist Episcopal Church here in, this, in the city of Philadelphia, <coughs> uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, he, had, he received a, a Master of Divinity degree from Lutheran uh, Seminary in uh, Gettysburg, um, Pennsylvania, and received a, a, a Doctor of Divinity degree from Adam uh, Seminary, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, <clears throat> our preacher um, is one who has a very caring spirit, one who has a, a shepherd, a shepherd's heart. Uh, he is indeed a servant uh, leader. And through this period of time that I have known him, he has been what I consider a brother beloved. He's been there for us, for me and for Mother McAllister always checking on us, wanting to make sure that everything's all right and everything is in, in order. Check. <laughs> oh, copycat. <laughs> mm -hmm. She says, all right, to be a copycat, as long as you be, you copying the right cat. 
our preacher <laughs> uh, has two daughters and uh, seven grandchildren. Pray for him. Pray with him. They, t they tell me that he's a revivalist. He goes all over the country preaching revivals, preaching and singing, singing and preaching. But can I tell you that he is uh, he's not a singing preacher, but he's a preacher that sings. There's a difference, you know. And so I present to you uh, the pastor of Hickma Temple, African Methodist Episcopal Church, the Reverend Dr. Gregory Nelson. Pray with him and for him as he comes to share word from the Lord. Like a ship that's tossed and driven Battered by an angry sea Oh, when the storms of life are raised The fury falls on me. I wonder what have I done? Oh, that makes this race so hard to run. Oh, but then I to my soul don't worry the Lord will make a way somehow come on help me well I know the Lord will make a way somehow oh when beneath the cross the cross I bow. Come on, y'all. He will take away. He will take away. Oh, your soul. Why don't you let him, let him, let him have your better now? Oh, when, when the Lord back down, oh, yeah, so heavy. about it. There's a sweet relief in knowing the Lord, the Lord will make a way somehow. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. I know the Lord will make a way. As a matter of fact, he's making a way right now. I only got 15 minutes. I only got 15 minutes. I only got 15 minutes. Hi, ya, 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 ya. Oh my God. Hi, ya, Baba. I wish I had time. If I was, if I was at Hickman this morning, I wish I had some time. Ooh, God, thank you. To our bishop. To our bishop. Thank you, bishop. Thank you, mother, for this opportunity. Thank you, thank you to our presiding elders and their consultants, all of the presiding elders and especially my presiding elder. Thank you, Dr. Sturdivant, for your leadership. I'm gonna preach real quick. Can I preach real quick? Yes. Just two, 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 two quick, quick scriptures we're gonna give you and then we're gonna take a rest in John 4 and we're gonna preach and let you go. Can I say a uh, happy, good afternoon to the greatest church in African Methodism, the Hickman Temple African Methodist Episcopal Church. Genesis chapter 34. 
We're going to start with Genesis 34, read two verses, and then we're going to rest in John chapter 4. Genesis 34, verse 18 through 20. Excuse me, Genesis 33, 18 through 20. Genesis 33, 18 through 20. Later, having traveled all the way from Padan Aram, Jacob arrived safely at the town of Shechem in the land of Canaan. There he set up camp outside the town. Jacob bought a plot of land where he camped from the family of Hamar, the father of Shechem, for 100 pieces of silver. And there he built an altar and named it El Elohi Israel. John chapter 4. The gospel recorded by John chapter 4. Let's begin reading at verse 4. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar. Near the field of Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. Amen. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised for the Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. Uh, she said to Jesus, you are a Jew. And I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift of God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I will give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket. She said, and the well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides... Uh, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I, 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 I will give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. I want to preach uh, for the next seven minutes from this thought. New water from an old well. New water from an old well. For Christians, Jacob's well represents a place where a sinful person can encounter Jesus as Savior. Our John 4 text is a familiar text that most of us learned in Sunday school. Yes, we learned about a woman from Samaria who came to Jacob's well to get some water. The text suggests that she may have been a bit active. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She may have been a bit promiscuous because she had more than one husband. But for me, listen, but I want you to help me. She had more than one husband. And when Jesus asked her, go tell your husband, she responded, I don't have any. He said, yeah, you're right. You, 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 you've had five. The one you have is not yours. And when we read this text, Dr. Bird, we stop there and get caught up in the fact of how many husbands she had. But I want to tell you, give me about five minutes. Listen, for me, that's not where the power is in this text. The power for me in this text in John 4 is that the same well, my God, and the same well in John 4 is the same well in Genesis 33. Y'all ain't going to help me, but I'm already preaching. Yeah, yeah, the well in John chapter 4, it's an old well. It's an old well. As a matter of fact, if we read the historian account, the well in John 4 is not the first well, it's the second well. 
Ah, uh, the first well was destroyed by the military optionist who destroyed Jacob's first well, and he and his sons had to rebuild it again. So the so so the well in St. John 4 is the second well. Somebody say it's an old well. Here in John 4, Bishop, Jesus engages a woman and asks her for a drink. Jewish law suggests that Jesus should have never asked her anything. And if he did, Jewish law suggested that she would have not even paid him any attention. But here we begin to see how new water can come from an old well. Can I say this to you? There's nothing wrong with our music. There's nothing wrong with our worship. There's nothing wrong with our liturgy. Uh, uh, I like what we do. But every now and then, we must be willing to infuse the old with the new. Oh, my God, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help myself preach if you don't help me. 206 years, the Philadelphia Annual Conference is an old well. Yes, it is. Mother Bethel, Bethel Ardmore, Campbell Media, uh, Mount Zion Atkin, Hickman Temple. It's an old well. But I believe it's possible to get new water from an old well. Ah, yeah, God. We've got to be willing to try something new. Try something different. Uh, the old law prevented Jesus from talking to a Samaritan woman. The old law would have stoned the Samaritan woman if she had been the engager of a conversation with a Jewish rabbi. But I want you to know that Jesus, 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 in John chapter 4, he flips the script and the Bible says, that Jesus went to her and engaged the conversation. Let me stop right there. If our churches are going to grow, we've got to go out and engage the neighborhood. Somebody say it. Hey, God, I wish I had some time. Jesus engaged the woman and said, Woman, I'm a little thirsty. Can I have something to drink? No, no. You can't have nothing. I can't help you. I shouldn't even be talking to you. But the Bible says that the woman said to Jesus, even if I wanted to give you some water, you ain't got no rope. You ain't got no bucket. And you're not greater than Jacob who gave us this well. And I'm going to close right here and tell you to 206 session of the annual conference if we don't learn how to get new water from an old well our church is gonna dry up if we don't learn how to get new water from an old well our churches are gonna dry up yeah! Yeah! Ah! Yeah! Hey, new water from an old well I gotta close but I used to hear my grandmama sing. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give living water. Thirsty one, stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank from that living stream. My thirst was quenched. My soul revived. I live in him. New water from an old well. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. If you got a praise, you better get it in now. Come on and put those hands together. Give God 
some praise. I believe the Amy Church can get some new water if we're willing to trust God. Come on, church, give him some praise. Give him some praise. Watch how God will change and transform. Watch how God will make you as white as snow. So while we are waiting for someone to accept the invitation, let us all join in together and stand. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to him I freely give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wear the love and trust him in his presence. Let us all join in together. Yeah. Thank you.
You know, I like that second stanza. Humbly at his feet I bow, worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me. Jesus, I pleasures all forsaken take me me Jesus take me Put your hands together and thank God for this preacher. Thank God for this preach word. This S and S, style and substance. Amen. I, I, I like that. Um, new water and old wells. I know we got a lot of problems. We got a lot of problems in our church. We've got a lot of things we got to address. But don't give up. Don't walk away now. If the water is stale, let's dig a little deeper. And perhaps we'll spring up fresh water in the old well. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that God sent, <clears throat> sent message. Amen. All right. After hearing all these sermons, these guys have been preaching all week. You know, everybody wants to preach now. Come on, Dr. Tyler. <laughs> thank you, Bishop, and thank you, my friend, Reverend Nelson, for that powerful message. and. Uh, you're right, Bishop, we all want to preach now. So um, today, as we move toward our offering, and we're glad that folk are worshiping with us online, I'm going to ask that uh, team would put up the giving instructions now. We've had an opportunity to have a conversation, uh, Bishop, with the Finance Committee and with the presiding elders, and we think that we have a good plan going forward. Uh, we were a little off in our calculations, trying to do uh, a good thing by doing the pre-offering, but we didn't account for everything. So what we're asking of you is not anything different than what we have always done at the annual conference. So um, please understand this is not catching up. This is not over and above. This is literally what we have always done. So for this offering, we're asking for pastors, delegates, and others to do $35. This evening for Christian Ed, $35. Tomorrow for ordination, 60, which is the total, 50, and $10 for our missionary offering. And on the closing, if you have not done the pre-offering, $100 pastor, 100 delegate, and then the missionary offering. If you've done the pre, then simply for one pastor or delegate. You decide that in your local church. So that's how we'll carry ourselves. Now, some are um, going to do that in one bulk payment. Uh, Bishop, some have already said they'll just write one check and they'll just have it out of the way. Uh, others have given online, so we're not going to try to micromanage that. I want to thank uh, Pastor Bird, who has said at St. Matthew, get my mic. St. Matthew has um, 
graciously offered to do a lump sum check of $1,000 to help us catch up. So let's thank God for Pastor Bird and for St. Matthew. And um, now, so again, we, this is not to put pressure on anybody. Do not do anything outside of what you know you can do. Mother Bethel will match that and will also join you with $1,000. So as well, I see Reverend Bailey, Reverend Cavaness, Reverend Capers, thank you all so very much. This is going to help us. So again, fit in where you are. And uh, yes, Elder Lett. Well, I'm saying there, um, some are going to do a lump. Reverend Bird and I are doing $1,000. I'm assuming, I don't know if that's what you, yeah, that's what they're saying as well. The lump sum, if you can, uh, somebody could do the quick calculation for me. 240? Sure. Okay, thank you. 240 <laughs> pastor, 240 delegate. There you go. All right, so we good? All right, again, Bishop, thank you again for the way that you spoke to us today. Very, very refreshing. And um, again, you can see the spirit in this place as a result of it. So with that said, we're going to do this old school for the pastors who have not yet given or who are going to give in this offering. Uh, we're going to have you come first. Finance committee, if you would please come and join me first. And once they have the baskets ready, the pastors will come, followed by the other clergy, followed by the delegates. We'll call you at that time, then our spouses, our components, and everyone else. All right? Everybody will get a chance to walk. Uh, we're going to walk uh, in just a moment. You all have the baskets? You can just bring the, if you were doing a lump sum check, you can do that now. Yeah, we need the baskets down here. Thank you. You can do the lump sum in Cash App. Bethel Carlisle is doing 500. Thank you so very much for our pastor, Bethel Carlisle. If we were at Mother Bethel, I'd say you'd come tap the basket with your phone, but um, <laughs> it's a sign of faith. <laughs> Thank you. Just here, why don't you all just put them in the baskets when you come on up. All right, all of our pastors, please come. All of our pastors, quickly. And if all the other clergy and evangelists and others in ministry would please come at this time. This offering is made out to the Philadelphia Annual Conference. Thank you, Elder Sturdivant did the cash app. Thank you so very much. Delegates, would you all please come if you've been prepared by your pastors and your congregations. Come on, delegates. The cash app address, if you can't see it, is dollar sign P-A-C-A-M-E church. Dollar sign P-A-C-A-M-E church. Oh, $500 is a lump sum from Morris Brown. Thank you, Reverend Justice. All right, look at the delegates. Thank you, Reverend Smart did cash app as well. All right, Mother McAllister and the spouses, if you would please come. Thank you, Mother. All of our spouses. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Reverend Justice said they are also doing 1,000. Here's the other 500 from Morris Brown. Give them a hand. Okay, great. Waters has also done the lump sum, pastor and delegate. Thank you. All right, spouses. And all of our component heads, missionaries, lay, YPD, Christian Ed, church school, sons of Allen, ushers, dance ministry, custodial engineers. Oh. Everybody. All right, there we are. Thank you, there's our lay, Christian Ed. All right, now if you have not given, if we did not come down your lane, if you will please come on down. And again, if you're online, we are uh, trusting that you are moving out. Thank you, Wesley AME did the lump sum for 240. Thank you. All right, on Cash App, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Cavendish, for the thousand for Bethel Ardmore. 
Wonderful. Thank you, Bethel Harrisburg, Reverend Brangman. Thank you, Reverend Walters, for doing the lump sum. Oh, $1,000 from Reverend Bailey and Harris, uh, Lancaster, excuse me, Bethel Lancaster, thank you. Thornberry and Metropolitan and Ward, thank you all for doing the cash app with the lump sum. Oh, what a wonderful thing. Thank you. All right, let us present our gifts now to the Lord. If you all can put the baskets together into one. All things come of thee. I'm sorry, hold it. Out of district guest, are you here? Oh, I'm sorry. Please, just one second. Bishop has an out of town guest he's gonna introduce. The Reverend uh, Charmaine uh, Reagan, uh, she's a, a presiding elder in, in Seventh Episcopal District, and she is a candidate for Episcopal Service 2024. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. Let's give her a hand. Thank you. Thank you. And St. Paul uh, Elmwood has also given $1,000. All things come of thee. Good afternoon, good afternoon. We just have a few important announcements. First, we want to let you know that if you plan to be with us tomorrow and Sunday at St. Matthew, the protocol for St. Matthew is proof of vaccination. So you need to bring your cards with you. Temperature checks and masks. Today we will be attempting to do this uh, clergy family luncheon, a vision of our bishop with as much order as possible. We do believe in working with um, Sister Deborah Stancil, who is over uh, the clergy family. We do believe that we have it in somewhat good order. We, we certainly have tried. So those persons who will be going from the clergy and you have meal tickets, you have not had to pay for a ticket. Those persons who are going from the clergy and the spouse, the family fit without being clergy, without having the meal tickets, you have paid for a ticket. If you have not done that prior to this moment, it is too late to do that. We have 100 people that we are seeking to seat, 100 people. So we can't add on at this point. Those persons who have meal tickets who are not going to the clergy family, you will be eating separately and there is seating for you. So the clergy family will meet in the Liberty Room those who have meal tickets that are not part of clergy family, you will meet in the Franklin room. Persons who are buying your uh, lunch on your own, you will be going through th to the restaurant as you did yesterday. So there are three things moving at the same time. And we want Bishop to know that we try to do our best to have your vision come to light here in the South District and we just wanna make it as orderly as possible. So if you're going to clergy family, if you have a meal ticket, you don't have to pay 
but if you don't have a meal ticket, you should have already gotten your ticket, and your lunch is in the Liberty Room. If you have a meal ticket, then your lunch is in the Franklin Room, and if you don't have anything, then your lunch is in the restaurant. <laughs> And that's still $15, amen. amen. Also, um, everyone has been very kind and everyone in the hotel has commented on how accommodating the, the people in the hotel are. And they have been. But when I was stopped by one of the staff, they said to me that you all are very, very kind as well. and I just want them not to see you for real, amen? <laughs> so continue to stay nice. No, but I, I think you need to know that. I think you need to know that they said that you were very nice and you were very courteous and they have been very accommodating to us and we thank God for them, amen? And so I want to especially thank the uh, registration committee who has been through quite a bit this week uh, under the auspice of, of Reverend Deborah Tall Speaks. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for the preacher this afternoon who is a part of the South District. I want to thank God for the one who introduced the bishop who is a part of the South District. I want to thank God for the choir. Many are a part of the South District. I just want to tell y'all, don't mess with us, because we up for something today. In an effort to determine the time that we were reassembled, um, the clergy luncheon is that um, buffet style? Yes, it is. How about for the others? The, okay. Even for the ones who um, um, must pay for their meals? No, and the, I don't have any food for them. Okay. I'm trying to determine if it's cooked to order, then we, I'll need, we'll need a little more time. If it's not, then we could do it an hour and a half, I think. We got a lot of stuff, a lot of business we need to attend to. But if hour and a half all right so all right okay so an hour and a half the time that we was okay and um, yeah uh, um, the Reverend um, our presider Reagan is with us and she's she'll be leaving in a few minutes so we're, I want to give her a few minutes just to come and say hello to us um, she'd come all the way from South Carolina um, to be here. And she's a candidate for the Episcopal service. You have a uh, Thank you, Bishop McAllister. Well. Supervisor McAllister, my name is Charmaine Reagan Merrick, and I am aspiring to become a bishop in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. I am on a relentless pursuit in kingdom building. What you may not know is that I'm presiding elder. I've been a presiding elder for the last eight years. I'm serving under Bishop Samuel Green and Supervisor Green. I, what you don't know is that I was born here in Philadelphia in Lankanaw Hospital. And I um, went back to my birthplace, the place where I, my, my first house, and now I'm the owner of that first house. And, and so North Philly is not like North Philly used to be. Uh, there's been some changes. Can I get a witness? Uh, and so one thing that is our challenge for the church is change. I like that message that was preached today. Um, we, we've got to manage our changes. You know, I have been in ministry for 40 years this year. And the Lord has blessed me to purchase a hotel. The Lord has, for, for, for transitional housing, the Lord has blessed me to purchase 100 acres for camping and having fun and paid for it. The Lord has blessed me. I've been a general conference delegate since 1996. 
And I it was not just one that sat down. I was one who submitted legislation. The last legislation I submitted was that we keep account of who our children, who our children are. We need to know who they are because they're not the church of tomorrow. They're the church today. I'm rushing out of here today because something happened in the district that I serve, Newberry District. I don't know if you heard about it, but four black guys killed because of some kind of gang mess. And one of them is going to be buried in one of our cemeteries. I'm not afraid of any gangs because I know the Lord is on my side. And I know there's some things, some changes we need to make to make sure that our young people and their parents get back into church. I like coming to these things because I hear so many wonderful things that people are doing. And I guess what? I take them and we go back and we do them in, in the Newberry District. I need your prayers. I need your support. And again, thank you so much, Bishop. I appreciate this time. Again, my name is Charmaine Reagan Merrick, and I am seeking Episcopal office. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Thank you for coming by and sharing it with us. And as you continue, our prayers go with you as you continue to press, press your claim. All right, and so um, we'll come back now at 3.10. At 3 o'clock, I'm asking that the... Um, uh, uh, um, devotional uh, team will be, be in place and so we're going to start exactly at 310 all right church let us stand as we praise God from whom all blessings flow <laughs> to him that is able to keep us from falling. To present us for presence with exceeding joy. The only wise God, our Savior, through Christ our Lord, be glory, dominion, majesty, and power, henceforth now and forevermore. 